Hello and welcome to Ask Lur. This is the mega episode. We're going to be taking a little bit of a break for the time being, so we figured we would get as many people to ask as many questions as we physically can. Uh, and so we're gonna we're gonna kick it off. Uh, I am Jordan, and to my left we have Nelly. Hello, I'm here. And to Nelly's left we have Cameron. Huh? The whole squad. Yeah. Never before. New combo. Exactly. Where the where the S rate drop. <laughs> no. no, no, wait. No, we didn't line it up. We fused into our action. Oh, wait, I have to do I have to do both, right? Yeah. I can do this. Come on, Nelly. Uh... I believe in you. <laughs> there we go. We're doing yes. great. Now uh... we have Voltroned up. Yes. And speaking of Voltron, uh, the YouTube members have Voltroned up to ask us questions today. Uh, you are more than welcome to also become a member down below. Uh, you can't ask us questions anymore because we're taking a break from this series. But hey, you know what? I'm sure there's still other fun things that you can do. Like go to our Patreon and make it so we can eat. Uh, I love to eat and also feed people and things that I care about. And I'm sure these lovely two also do. Um, My dog appreciates your dollars. Yeah. Feed Nissa Fund. Feed Nissa Fund. All of, uh, all of the money that you send to me through Patreon leaves Canada immediately and goes to float the games or the United Kingdom economy through Games Workshop. There we go. And I, I feed it's aid. this thing. Aww. Mm -hmm. Somehow oh. that United Kingdom has got to figure out a way to earn income, right? It's true. Yeah, exactly. I mean, apparently GW is like their third or fourth largest manufacturer. Oh. Whoa. That's wild. That's... Yeah. Number one manufacturer is white people. <laughs> uh, and speaking of things that get manufactured, you could also go to our store, start.readyrun.com, where you can buy shirt and cup and DVD. Matt? Buy DVD. Matt. Oh. Matt Griffith. You can buy him. No, don't. Don't. We need to keep him. The, yeah, the shipping, we, we've we worked out the manufacturing, but the shipping is so far continuing to elude us. Yeah. Speaking of things that elude us, uh, starting this questioning has been <laughs> eluding us. Now, the, So let's start with uh, Sonia Swan asks, if there was a zombie outbreak at PAX, which members of Lure would you most want to be in attendance? I can go I, first. No, okay. you want to go first, Cameron? Go well, I, I just wanted a little clarification on this question. Am I also in attendance or am I just like assembling? <laughs> like, <laughs> who do I want to be in a zombie outbreak? Or the... <laughs> who do I want to be in a zombie outbreak with? I That's think are separate questions. I'm pretty sure the vibe of the question was, who do you want by your side when there's a zombie outbreak going on around yeah. you that you need to try to survive? But I love that you saw, you read these words and you're like, Ah, yes. Finally, James Turner will be at the <laughs> yeah, center like, of the maelstrom. Just just threading the, the lid on the jar shut yeah. and then shaking. Um, <laughs> Adam. Yeah. You want Adam with you? Yes. I feel that he would have a calm and collected head in a crisis. And he's also, you know, just such a large man. Mm -hmm. He's got that reach, you know? Oh, that's true. What about okay. you, that is that is totally valid and mm -hmm. i appreciate that being on lots of episodes of okie Oki, i can't tell whether adam would be like calm cool collected like we're often used to seeing him anytime it's like we're in a meeting mm -hmm. or whether he'd be you know excitedly like slapping his knee and like besides himself with like terror like he often is in the middle of a video game mm -hmm. um yeah. Maybe not terror so much, but disbelief. He's often like dazed in disbelief. I will. So I chose, and I, I want, I wanted to make two people because the question was unsure. There's and for different reasons. For the physical attributes, I actually want Ben Ulmer with me. I think the guy just has like the most um, kind of like I don't know soldier like metabolism of the people at LRR. <laughs> I just see like Ben moving around getting lots of stuff done like if we have to like dig a hole mm. or like 
build a shelter i just feel like ben ulmer just i have the vibes that like he would pull it off like the most succinctly so that's after okay. a bunch of travel with ben but for knowledge purposes i want alex stacy yeah mm. yeah that yeah right? like yeah. he's gonna be able to be like no 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 you put the bullets in this end <laughs> yeah like, oh, also you. alex is pretty handy yeah yeah also great at building stuff probably not bad on the like metabolism like end of things like get get job done eat later power mm -hmm. through so those are those are my two uh my rider dies don't tell them yeah <laughs> um so for me uh i it, it's interesting cam had one nelly has mm -hmm. two i have three. Oh, good um so actually you two Aww. are uh pretty high on the on the list um because you're both very sweet <laughs> Like, um on it, on like i changed my mind i picked jordan and camera too <laughs> well here's 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 why you're very sweet um i feel like there's an anger there that needs to get released <laughs> so both of you could just go like berserker mode <laughs> right yeah go go absolutely yeah. ape also uh, i would like to point out that i am sweet as a result of being vegetarian so i feel that that's extra attractive for the zombies oh. right like they're you know, they'll be gnawing on me and be like, oh, apricots. <laughs> See, I, I feel like that would make them also not want to eat you. Um, because if they're going for meat, like, I I feel like to, to like, the more carnivore people, because Nelly, you're also a uh, vegetarian. I'm also vegetarian, yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I would be more, like, foie gras to the zombies, because I am a meat eater. And, mm. you know, I'm, I, it's like, I've got more protein to me. Meanwhile, you two are a lot more like lean meat. So it depends on the type of zombies. See, this is, this is, I've been yeah. thinking about this all day. <laughs> are zombies apex predators that only eat other carnivores? Like, do they only want carnivore brains? I wonder I... if there was a zombie outbreak and like the vegans just get to fly under the radar somehow. They're just like still going about the day. Their zombies are just around. The zombies are like dogs to them. It's just like, oh, cute little zombie. I suppose it depends on what subgenre of zombie outbreak you're looking for. Is that's the other thing like yeah. we were talking about 28 days later before this are these the zombies that can like starve to death or are these the zombies that are just gonna go forever and so there's there's a lot of factors my third choice this one was a hard one uh and is matt griffith for the same reasons as the two of you that I could also see him getting the rage out and also juniper would serve as a very good attack dog because she screams at everything true true i like the idea that it's like you you three are all very sweet which means that i know you're able to go totally ballistic and yeah. completely lose it and i'm like <laughs> harsh how, how many minutes, fair how many minutes into a youtube video is it safe for us to swear can i say like ape shit yeah i think we're yeah good. we're safe yeah, yeah okay like it would just be a situation where you would make the first contact with the baseball bat mm. And, and then feel, it would feel too good. Yeah, it would <laughs> feel right. Yeah. And also, I can hide a zombie bite like nobody's business. Oh, no, that's Ooh. a reason not to have you on the squad. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I cannot not hide a zombie bite like nobody's business. Cam has been replaced with James now. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Damn. Oh, well. I guess I, we'll I also, not go to PAX. Uh, I will say um, Adam and Ben were also on like my short list, um, but they would just stand around during the zombie apocalypse and just have a conversation for about an hour and a half of the three hour zombie apocalypse. So. Yeah, just, kind of like a Greek chorus. Yeah. Ooh. They're just somehow able to like sip monster energy, energy and do banter while there's a zombie apocalypse happening around them. Exactly. Providing color commentary. Exactly. Yeah. They're still making content during the zombie outbreak mm -hmm. at PAX. It's all they know. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Well, well, Twitch chat, what do you think? Are these are these outbreak zombies or are these dark sorcery zombies? Exactly. All right. Well, yeah, Incredible. I think that's a pretty solid team. All right. Our next question. Um, what's something that you've always wanted to know about each other, but have never asked? I don't know if either of you two have the, your questions prepared, but I, I do. I have a callback. Ooh. Okay. And it's, when did you stop eating meat, Cameron? And like, what uh, were the factors involved? I stopped eating meat in 
oh, it would have been 2010, early 2010. Okay. Um, I went pescatarian first in like autumn of 2009. And then when I came back from seeing my family over Christmas, I, I just stopped eating meat. And it was because I had a crush on someone who was vegetarian. Nice. <laughs> and Incredible. it just kind of stuck. <laughs> That's iconic. <laughs> so now I need to find them and ask them their reasons for not eating meat. But I won't out who you had a crush on <laughs> in August of 2010. Well, it worked out eventually. <laughs> nice. Oh. I, I stopped eating meat for like, yeah, just humanitarian reasons. I just didn't want to kill the sweet little cows anymore. Yeah, once I started thinking about it, I couldn't go back. Right? It was one of those things that as soon as you develop the consciousness about it and start interrogating it, then, yeah, it suddenly became extremely unattractive to me to eat meat. It's also like you've done the work to, like, you know, survive and be comfortable without it. So then it's mm -hmm. like when you go back, it's like, well, I'd have to go through this again if I wanted to do it again. Or, you know, I've kind of done the hard part. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I'd, I'd already done the hard part. Nice. Jordan, okay. I want to ask you what color your hair is. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I think like, it is a question I've asked before. Or, or either one. No, yeah, yeah. currently. I'm thinking. Uh, currently, that. it's mostly kind of blonde. Um, right. And then orange, I guess, on top. I don't know. I saw Haley Williams in the Misery Business music video far too young. And now it's just forever been the dream hairstyle. But yeah. but she was probably ripping off the fifth element, right? Did Maybe she... not. I, I thought Lily's hair was only orange. Okay, okay. So the the distinction is important too. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, I've uh, I've had every hair color in the books. Uh, I was a model in high school um and i used to work for hair companies a lot and i was the only one who was like yeah cut my hair bleach it. i don't care it'll grow mm. and uh, so everybody else was like you can't touch my hair and you were like yeah. touch my hair well because it's when you're a model it's your hair becomes part of you like you get cast because you're a blonde with long hair oh, you get cast okay. as a brunette so like if especially if you get cast and then there's some time between the show or the photo shoot you um you can lose that job because right. you dyed your hair or got a haircut or something. Hmm. So, but me, I didn't care. I was a weird kid in high school. I didn't talk to anybody. So if I showed up with purple hair one day and green the next, no, nobody cared. <laughs> right. And it was always like the job you're going to that would like be changing your hair. Forever, right? Yeah. So I worked a lot of hair shows. So I would get like haircuts on stage and like have my hair dyed on stage. And then, yeah, I, I was more of a runway and hair show model than I was like photography. Hair okay. content. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, it was a fun time. All right. I have a question for the two of you. It's the same question for both. Um, okay. So I, my favorite thing is people being nice to themselves. So sorry, sex for both of you. <laughs> what is something that you like about yourself that like the viewers wouldn't necessarily know? Like, not like, I'm really good at fighting games. I'm really good at Warhammer. Like, they know that, of that about both of you. Oh, God. Like, I want, I, want a, a rare, I want a hot take of something good about yourself. I am medium competent at improvising um, song lyrics and rapping. Like, oh. if, yeah, if I need to. I'm not sure that I'm going to do it right now on Ask Lure, But, you know, as a, a personal sweet thing. Yeah, I uh, have both like, I don't know, listen to enough Beastie Boys or whatever that I can do a bit of a verse and also listen to a lot of Tenacious D and real opera. And so mm. I kind of just have the confidence to do that around the house. <laughs> and I, I like that. that about me. That's really good. You're an I'm, IRL bard. Yes, mm. somewhat. Hell. Um. I guess I have been told often enough that I have started to believe it, that I am a totally reasonable cook. Ooh. Nice. What's what's like a, a new recipe that you've recently conquered? Uh, I think I have finally figured out how to make cacio e pepe properly. Ooh. So that feels nice, right? When you have like a simple dish with simple ingredients that can just go completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. That you can no longer like mess up accidentally awesome. that feels nice 
Nice. Yeah, I know. I I always see the bread that you post, and I'm always just like, holy shit. Okay, my bread <laughs> uh, got fruit, or my my sourdough starter got fruit flies. No. Oh. So it was. Oh, it was the most revolting thing I've ever had to deal with in my life. Because <laughs> for whatever reason, I didn't throw out the jar. I decided that I wanted to keep the jar, so I had to like empty. Oh no. Mm. <laughs> No, no sorry cameron yeah jordan that question was so sweet you have to answer it for yourself too oh shit uh, <laughs> you said this was your thing i'm really good at Seconded. coming up with nice things about people and then not <laughs> um incredibly I... loud incorrect buzzer yeah. <laughs> okay i'm i'm really good at being a cheerleader uh oh. not like actually like doing the the pom-poms and the cartwheels and stuff but like um I, I love being a hype man for people. So, and I think I'm, I'm really good at hitting people where it like, not where it hurts because it's a good thing, but like finding that route, like the way a middle schooler is like laser precisioned on finding like the thing that you hate about yourself. Mm -hmm. I try to be the person who like is laser positioned on like, here's something that you like about yourself and you didn't realize. You got the I reverse also think, of that John Mulaney bit. Yeah, exactly. Nice. I also think I'm a pretty good DM. Uh, okay. I, nice. I DM uh, about eight hours a week. Oh, really? And, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's I run two campaigns currently, and they're both on Sunday, and that's why I don't oh. work on Sundays. Oh, okay. <laughs> wild. Yeah. It's a good time. I think anyone who feels they are a good DM is a good DM. Like, I, maybe some people are doing something wrong, but like... It's just, it's a very demanding job. So That's a lot. if you can, if yeah. you're regularly leaving your sessions, like, yeah, did it. Like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you listening to this, if you've been working at Dungeons and Dragons and yeah, or know. any other TTRPG, sure. There yes. is more than D and D do other games. Okay. Any tabletop role-playing game you're doing. Yeah. If you, you have a good feeling about it regularly. Yes, you did. You nailed it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Nelly. Um, yes. I guess my question for you is. This, what do you love about trombone? Why did you, why did you go to, you, you've got a fine arts degree. I do. Yeah. I have a degree in music and I played trombone for it. Yeah. That um, represents kind of like a huge investiture in time. And I wanted to know about your passion for that. So yeah, just when we were 11, we were offered our choice of the instruments in the, mm -hmm. in the orchestra, right? Because it's like band is starting. If you want, you can start band. And I was like, that does sound good. Um, if I were to like re-engineer the whole approach to music, I think I probably would have tried to push myself to learn piano or guitar earlier, mm -hmm. just because it's so much easier to get playing and singing in any group when you have those like chordal instrument skills. And I've never yeah. really picked those up, although I did play some piano for my degree. Um, I'm still not like super competent at it or even medium competent. Um, but what I like the most about the trombone is, and this sort of like a cop out but it's the sound of the trombone like it's both the brass attacks and the like be the way that a brass instrument starts a note is more or less shared like though that part of the instrument's delivery is pretty similar in terms of what you can and can't do with each um embouchure and set of tubes but uh yeah I, I i love the brass start of the note and um then, yeah, the trombone, I don't know, the things people tell me about it that's, like, the most similar is, like, it has, it's, like, the closest of the brass family to the human voice. Really? Um, but I didn't I didn't pick that up as a kid. I was just like, oh, yeah, that one. Like, that hmm. that timbre, I didn't know what that word meant by the time, but, like, that sound um, is just the one that I like the best. Yeah, like, I always love um, seeing an orchestra gets set up and when they bring out the blast shields in front of the trombone players so they don't kill the violinists that's always <laughs> yeah. you, you know you're in for a treat then but i had largely the same experience in like when i was 11 and i think i said i wanted to play violin and the band teacher's like well we don't do that <laughs> uh but you can play french horn which kind of has like a similar vibe which right. was a lie uh um <laughs> I feel like the clarinet is also kind of close. You have to, it's weird, right? Because like if you're not playing stringed instrument, nothing else is a string instrument. Like they probably should have got you to try to play the electric bass. That's really the right. closest, right? Oh yeah, I suppose so. I, I guess they didn't that, want 
something they yeah want clarinet to use, right? was a non-starter because we had like 400 clarinetists and i also oh, was yeah. like this is a recorder yeah. right right like i've i've done the recorder thing i've been in grade five <laughs> um yeah, it's like fun fact. No matter what your what your uh, question to the music teacher is, they're going to come back with like, "Oh yeah, that's just like playing the bassoon. Oh yeah, that's just like playing the oboe. Oh yeah, that's just like playing French horn." <laughs> Those are the instruments that everybody, every um, music teacher wants their kids to show up with, right? <laughs> right, right. Like all the, all the ones that no one has. Um, and yeah. Jordan, uh, you often talk a lot about like the fandoms that you're into. Yeah. What do you think is the common thread through them? Um, I am extremely character driven. Okay. Um, I love a story with like a goofy little guy trying his best. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's why like, because I was I was thinking about this recently, because I was thinking about the three things that I'm like the most into currently. And it's Greek myths, wrestling, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay what okay. do these four things have in common it's goofy little guys in their silly little outfits yelling at each other um mm -hmm. and the women that do it do it better <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah um i i get really into like kind of figuring out like a core of a character mm -hmm. is something i'm really passionate about so if i if i can find like a little guy in in something that i really care about like when i was a kid i was really into death note and there is a character who is in seven or eight panels i'm so sorry to cause you that psychological damage but that's <laughs> when like... i was a kid i was into death note is like <laughs> yeah it's that's those are some words that we all yeah. just heard yeah um i but there's a character who's in it for like eight panels and mm -hmm. i think he's in for four minutes in the anime and he was my favorite character because I took those little bits of what he liked. I knew he liked cigarettes, video games, and candy. And I was like, that's my boy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, I grew up cosplaying. And so I think it all comes down to like something with a good character. Okay. It could have the best story in the world. And if the characters don't nab me, that's... Yeah, I've never thought about that. I'm going to be laying in bed at 4 a.m. this morning being like, <laughs> what makes me tick really yeah <laughs> call that. This, this is what's going to push me into therapy <laughs> all right <laughs> well i hope your therapist is a little guy i hope so too a blorbo oh an ebdb maybe scrungly one mm -hmm. yeah but not a pathetic are... meow meow yeah who who are what is the blorbo theory my my kids watch this show called like the Grizz or something, and it's just like it's sort of like an old uh, Bugs Bunny cartoon. There's there's no like dialogue. It's just like Ooh. stuff stuff happening, like silly stuff. The mm -hmm. main characters are Grizzly Bear, but there's these little like I think they're supposed to be lemmings or or mice or shrews or something, but they're like a weird little animated things, and like it's just called them the Dabu Ds. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, see, they they sound like little guys. I'm in. <laughs> Sign me up. Let's go. It's on Netflix, but in the kids section. All right, uh, that's going to do it for us. Uh, we're we're going to throw to Heather, Beach, and Paul answering the next couple of questions. I'd like to thank both of you for answering some questions with me. I had it's, fun. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I'm going to miss these. Yeah, me too. All right, well, bye, YouTube. Thank you, Jordan, and everyone else. I'm here with everyone else. Hello. Hello. It's we're, me, Beej, and it's Paul, and it's Heather, and you've seen us before. We're um, everyone else. Yeah. Well, everyone. Welcome to part two. <laughs> very confusing. Of this uh, very weird askler. And uh, in fact, before we get started with the questions, I know that what we do have to do is check in with your New Year's resolutions. Not and not this New Year's. No, no. last New Year's. We well, this is last, so this is complete cleanup to do. Right. I seem to remember that uh, that Heather and Paul and James, who is on tech right now, all Hello. three of them were yeah, all three of them were on an askler together, uh -huh. uh, which I was told that I teched, which I do not remember. But they had all made an agreement with each other that they would try to do something uh, as a New Year's resolution, and that they and then they made a bet involving money, mm -hmm. and that never got settled. It's true. So how did this go? Uh, Heather, do you want to explain what the okay. what the stakes were? I guess uh, we agreed. I think fifty bucks each, 
and whoever whoever made 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 good on their New Year's resolution would split the pot. And if none of us made good, Beach got all the money. Ah. So, um, I'm not any richer. Yeah. No. No. So somebody did their work. So yeah. So does, what, does what, everyone remember what their New Year's resolutions were? I think so. <laughs> uh so what, what was yours mine was that i would make a sweater did you make a sweater yeah i did <gasps> i haven't even not seen only this. not only did you, did you make a sweater but you brought it she made it I in secret proof. wait i made <gasps> this sweater uh... i also made this teddy bear but that was several years before that what you made that teddy bear yeah, yeah. it's nice oh. too it's got it's posable literal build a bear yeah <laughs> Yeah, I would really recommend just going to build a bear. <laughs> Tabers are hard. Hey, Aww. don't don't ring on it too it, hard. It has, I it has, really would prefer you not. It has posable uh, uh, things. Get them sitting again. Yeah, this I, is was, my. This is actually my. Well, this is the first one I made. I've made two of these. I took a class in Edmonton ages ago for making for making teddy bears. Teddy bear sweaters? Oh no, teddy bears. No, yeah. the sweater I just made. Nice. So I feel like I have fulfilled my my thing. As self-appointed judge, I, I deem this and, uh, uh, fulfillment. Because the objective, if I recall, was that you were uh, you you wanted to to sort of rekindle or or get sort of back into crafting. Yeah, a little bit. As a thing. Yeah, and and sweaters are different. Like most of the stuff I've made have been blankets. Hmm. Um, de like for Desert Bus, there's there's been like three or four there. And those are very flat, and sweaters are more 3D. And as we know, when you go from 2D to 3D, things get a lot harder all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. But I feel like being flat is like one of the defining characteristics of a blanket. Yes. In a lot of ways. It's, it makes it much easier. <laughs> so, Paul, do you remember what yours was? Uh, I recall that mine was um, to... So, uh, I believe that mine was to try to be try to figure out a way to uh, be um, like singing public or not publicly, but like in groups in yeah. a group. Yeah, more. I think it involved more sea shanties or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, so the original idea, I don't know, I guess I'll have to get some the judges to to <laughs> yeah. on how I did on this. So the original idea is there's there is a group in Victoria called the Victorian Nautical Song Circle that is a shanty group. Okay. That they they meet periodically and and sing shanties. Just that just for fun. Now, unfortunately, uh over the pandemic and various other things, it's kind of not Hap like it's kind I don't know if it's it hasn't really like officially disbanded but I'm on their mailing list and I you know which was frustrating because I kept getting uh you know before I kept getting like things about like hey we're meeting and it's always like this Friday yeah and I'm like well I can't you know like like my the, the it never worked out with my scheduling yeah and then but now I just like I everyone's you know every like six months I'll receive an email be like hey are we still doing something and it's unfortunately it's a combination of they lost their venue yeah they apparently there was some there was sea they've lost the sea yeah <laughs> well there uh, there were previously uh they, they previously um uh, uh met at a, a local pub ah okay called the bent mast oh. which is very very uh, appropriate. Um, and apparently changes to liquor licensing meant that um, uh, you couldn't have people. Basically, you can't, like, sing and drink at the same time. I've noticed that, actually. And you sing and drink at the same time? Uh, I've... I mean, but, I know that you're not really a, it's, a drinker it's, as it's, far as I know, but, like... It's, like, somehow... It's that, like, people who are, like entertaining can't be drink can't drink oh, okay or something there, there was like a weird change to liquor licensing that made that mess that up anyway uh so they had trouble you know finding a venue whatever so they they kind of so unfortunately that hasn't happened okay but uh i will say that um part of the reason why i originally um did uh, sort of wanted to do this is 
back in 2020, I think. And I, I believe I talked about this when we set these, mm -hmm. is that I was lucky enough to perform uh, as a, a, be part of a group that was we were brought in to back up um, a uh, shanty group that came to town for a thing called the Symphony Splash, mm -hmm. um, a group called Lenef that came to town. They're a shanty group, and they they put out a call for uh, local people to sort of come and be there, like. Uh, uh, whatever crew to, yeah, to, to have this chorus to yeah. have the chorus to yeah. do it and so I did that and it was quite enjoyable and so uh, and so I was like oh I want to do that figure out how to do that more um, and unfortunately it didn't work out with the Shanty group but that group um, they're actually doing they're actually restaging the um, that that concert okay so it was originally um uh, because of the pandemic and stuff, it was originally an outdoor thing that they did at Parliament Buildings, um, and they're actually restaging it um, at the Royal Theatre. Okay. Uh, and they asked the people who were backing them up before to come back and do it again. So uh, I'm going to be uh, doing that um, at the end of March, actually. Oh, so this yeah in the in the in this month. This month, yeah, yeah. we're recording this. Uh, yes. And uh, and I, I believe Dale will also be there. Hey, fun. So um, so that's that's something that so I am going to be doing that. I feel like okay. I feel like it's an E for effort, definitely. Like it wasn't any fault of your own that the group that you got <laughs> no, in with it, was like starting to like fall apart. It does sound like you you you. Like, because the whole point of it was to at least do more, right? Mm. Like, to kind of get into it. At least, like, it sounds like you were actually trying to 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 do some stuff and you're getting there, right? Like, I feel like New Year's yeah. resolutions aren't necessarily about the success or failure, but, like, the... The effort. The effort towards doing something, right? James, do you have an opinion on this? I'm not the judge. All right. Well, no. I... Yeah. I'm gonna... Uh, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna lean on the side of being generous here, so it doesn't have to cost anybody that much money. That I'm gonna right. say, yeah, I think All you right. fulfilled uh, as much as you can, and even though you're a little late at getting to the next point, you're still getting there. So that's uh, good. I think you, I think you're making it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and now I believe James <laughs> was going to be DJing. Yeah. Which uh, the DJ James? Uh, if 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 I don't know if there has uh, if nothing else. Uh, obviously, um, uh, DJ Turnler showed up at Desert Bus. Yep. To I, great acclaim. I don't know from if what there's any understand. proof of that based on uh, based on mods. It's, it's true. There is actually no public <laughs> proof of oh, that. Okay. I've also uh, I've also uh, been flying back and forth to Ibiza every other week. Uh -huh. Uh, they really oh, like me. That's why you. Were... That's why I've been gone so much. Uh, oh. It cost a fortune. I probably should have just gave Beach the fifty bucks. Yeah. Mm. You really didn't want to just lean into like Lego or something else that's equally <laughs> fortune draining, but maybe more stationary. I mean, I probably would have succeeded more. So yeah, my goal was. You could just to... claim you're one of those DJs that like wears a big head thing. That's all the true. Time. I'm yeah. actually de yeah. I'm actually dead mouse. That's uh, yeah. that's yeah. been me the whole time. Uh, but yeah, no, that was my goal. Uh, for last year, and I I purchased a little little mini uh, DJ th uh, thing, little turntable, little digital turntable thing, mm -hmm. uh, and I messed around with it a bunch at home, and I quickly realized that I think w what I wanted to be doing was what I actually did at Desert Bus, mm. which was just spin vinyl, and it's less about the it's less about the DJing, the mixing, the tempo matching. Um, and it's more, it's, it was more that I just really enjoy sharing music with people. Mm, um, more, more like DJ in like the radio sense of being like kind of, the yeah. curator. Yes, of the... mm. absolutely. Right. Uh, I mean, so I did, I did that one at Desert Bus. Uh, and while I didn't pick the songs personally, I did put a lot of work into the sort of the order of the songs. I've always been a big fan of making playlists. Mm. Um, and so that's the only thing that i publicly did last year again i played with the little thing that i bought at home a bunch and i i kind of quickly realized that that's not what i wanted to be doing mm -hmm. uh and then i have since done an additional one of those uh vinyl streams um uh i think like 
six weeks ago. And yeah, gonna, I came in and installed your equipment briefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be doing another one in a few weeks. And the and goal was to do one. Where, where have you been doing these? I did one. I've only done one, and it was here. Yeah, but like where? like In Studio C on the black drape. But was it streamed anywhere? Yeah, on my home channel. Ah, yeah. and which is uh, Twitch.tv slash James underscore LRR. Thanks for the plug opportunity. Yeah. I appreciate it. Trying really hard. Uh, here to help yeah, you yeah, yeah. That. Um, but yeah, so that's I think where I've landed. So I mean, uh, like uh, you know, you be you 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 do you be. I I'll give you fifty bucks if you don't want to. Oh, I like money. Yeah, but like I no, did. Wait, wait. I did. Is though is that you did do it? I, it yes. Yeah, I, you I, followed I, through. Like you, yes. you bought the equipment. You you taught yourself how to use it. Question. question. Somewhat. The rumor I heard was that you went to Desert Bus, you set it up, and you'd never touched it yet. Barely. Yeah. No, yeah. I I barely had an idea. Yeah, what I, I, I remember do. you setting it up Desert Bus and like. Or setting it up like before Desert Bus started. Yeah. And then being like, okay, so how do you do this stuff? Yeah. How do you actually like, <laughs> Cause, yeah. Because like if you had said that my plan this year is to learn how to play guitar and you waited until Desert Bus and then you like at the very end, you hauled in a guitar and you played three blind mice on it and that was it, you still would have technically fulfilled the the thing that you're like, I've learned that what I like about guitar is I like how it looks when it hangs on my wall. Yeah. Like if it was that kind of idea, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. Cause you, you did, you did the thing, you tried it out, you learned what you liked and what you didn't like about it. And then, and that, that was a period of growth Yeah, and yeah. you had to spend a lot of money is, to get there. Which is the point. So I think you fulfilled it as well. Hooray. Yeah. yeah I'd give it to him. And people at um, home might be like, oh, you're being way too lenient on them. I'm like, this is, this is not about let's do, this is a let's try. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is the problem I have with, with the way I see people get mad about New Year's resolutions. They act like, oh, I'm going to run a marathon. I didn't. New Year's resolutions suck. And I'm like... If you didn't make a plan to do that, thing, yeah. but you you tried, like yeah, maybe did, you got halfway there, or you like did you do a couch to five k to kind of warm up? Maybe you, it took you longer than you know, a year. Yeah, exactly. Good enough. Hey, that's that's my merit. That's my uh, one of my things this year. Oh, marathon, uh, not years. marathon. Oh Christ, the marathon? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm no, I'm I'm signed up for the TC ten k. Oh, oh, okay. Cool. I did. I got a notification on my watch the other day that you had finished a a, a lengthy run of some sort. Yes, I saw you re you responded to that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really. Said, a thing, an automated response that said, just you wait. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's freaking me out. I that's like a weird that's, ones. That's weird. That's one of the, yeah. <laughs> I always send people the threatening ones. But yeah, no, I'm trying to run a 10K, and I'm pretty sure by the last couple months I've been learning this, I'm pretty sure that people who say they've run marathons are just gaslighting us <laughs> because I can barely imagine running 10K. I'm pretty sure nobody is actually physically capable of running a marathon. They uh, all just lie. Oh, uh, fair. Mm. They start it and then they get in a car and they go the 24 miles and they get out and they run the last one. It's a, it's, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a con. Yeah. I love this. This in, in my my entire mindscape now. This is just James is doing this as his New Year's resolution, but he's secretly undercover trying to find out who's been gaslighting us through exercise. Yeah, yeah. And I'm here for it. Yeah, I ran five kilometers when I was uh, when I was like a uh, a teenager, and um, not because I like to run, but because they said you should go do this. And I'm like, I don't want to. I'm like, great, you're doing it. And I'm like, fuck. And after I don't know how long it took me, it took me about forty five minutes to an hour or something to run five kilometers because it was just the worst. Oh, people didn't make me do things I didn't want to do, because then they tried. They learned a very different side of Heather that was not nice. This is uh, actually, since this is, we're going to go off the rails here for a second. Yeah. James is now attempting to run, or he's going to run the TC 10K, um, or put, put his best effort into at least accomplish that. Uh, do either of you then, because you obviously, Paul, you said, well, you're following up with like, I'm going to perform in this thing so, this year. Maybe that leads you to the next step of that. The, the other part of that, I mean, I guess, so there is also a, there's a, very very long running um uh folk the the folk the victoria folk music society mm -hmm. i think has been running for like 50 years all something. right uh every like every week they do a thing um and half their and it's something that i have actually been going to especially in the last sort of six months uh, somewhat regularly um, with like my the, the meetings or performances. Uh, well, the the like it's the it's a yeah they're they're it's a performance or or it's like a it's split in, the night is split into like they do like a open mic thing and then they do a a, a featured performer. Oh neat. Okay. And so it's just it's just 
nice music and stuff. And I often I often go there uh, with my parents. Nice. It's something we sort of do together. Um, and so I've been I've been working up the nerve to try to do uh, like do something on the during the like open mic section. Um, I haven't yet. Yeah, fair. We'll see. Yeah. So maybe that's something that I'm going to attempt to in the next year. But we're not going to make any pronouncements about that. Uh, no. Maybe not. Well, I mean, yeah. I can't follow up since Saskler's not going to be here next year. Oh, uh, too bad. Absolutely. Too wrong. bad. So, I mean, <laughs> what, why would we Why would we make promises now? Uh, by the way, in the spirit of plugging things, um, if you are in Victoria, that concert that I was talking about, um, there, it's going on um, on uh, March 20. Uh, March 23rd and March 24th. Okay. There's a, uh, it's the Saturday and Sunday. Happening a, at the legislature grounds. No, this is the at the Royal Theater. At the Royal Theater, I'm sorry. Um, so if you're interested, you should check it out. Right. Uh, then, Heather, did you decide that you need a new goal this year? So what I've been working on this year is trying to get my, my, my streaming at home kind of under control mm -hmm. in terms of like, doing things with it like i've been streaming once a week generally tuesdays twitch.tv slash lunar jade but i've been working on getting my backlog of vods up on youtube.com slash lunar jade and i want to ideally i'd like to start streaming twice a week at home that's hard i'm not really sure if i i can get that one going but it's kind of just like a nebulous okay make sure i'm hitting the once a week make sure I, i'm getting at least one older vod up on YouTube once a week, making sure my VODs from the current week go up. And that's not about any sort of, um, oh, I'm trying to chase Oh, goodness, no, I did anything. that during the pandemic yeah. and I hated every moment of it. Mm. I just, just, I like having things organized. I know there, several people will be like, oh, where's where's the Hollow Knight playthrough you did? And like, oh, yeah, uh, it's not there. I guess I'll get to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, I don't know. That's, cool. that's mostly what I've been working on. Nice. Thanks. And I'm free of having to do anything ever. Beach never makes New Year's resolutions. No. I my because you're already perfect. You yeah, exactly. changing. Yes, it. exactly. <laughs> I think if I was going to do anything, uh, it would be to try to control when I go to bed way better than I have. Mm -hmm. um, and because uh, I, I have an awful lot of other stuff I have to live with anyway. So I'm, at least let's see if we can get that in way more under control like we did earlier this year and get back to doing that again. That's where I, that's, I think that that's the, that's harder than I thought it would be. And it's, yeah, it's a struggle. It is. Absolutely. Okay. Let's, let's tackle some questions. Though. Try to answer at least one, at least question. one question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is from Ringo Zombie says, what area of interest or expertise do you have that you don't get to talk about a lot, but you really want to? Uh, hmm. I mean, I guess I do talk about it, but well, um, something that sort of following on from all the other stuff that we've been talking about so far, um, something that I've always been really interested in is, uh, uh, sort of, um, folk tales and, and fairy tales and mm -hmm. myths and legends and that kind of thing. Nice. Um, and so... Uh, and sort of uh, folk music has is kind of you know certainly in a lot of cases is very tightly related to folk tales. You know, it's, it's all, they're, song they're, a lot of time. they're often the same thing. Yeah, um, and the and the uh, the way that those have um, uh, the way things stories evolve over time, not only and also not only like the content of the story, but the sort of meta aspect of like what that what what that talks what what that sort of um shows about the uh society that made that story like what they what they thought was um what they valued what they feared what they value yeah that yeah. that kind of stuff i find that really interesting mm -hmm. um and uh you know shanties and sea shanties and, and, and uh, different types of um, folk songs and work songs and that kind of stuff is sort of part of that. And I talk, I, I sometimes talk about it like a little bit like during Desert Bus, like when we're as a sort of introduction to a song or something, but it is an area of, of that I am quite interested in. Um, and 
as a side effect of how I personally, like how I memorize songs or how I learn songs is that I, I tend to like go over them over and over and over and over again. Um, and a side effect of that is you sort of start, you think about the lyrics a lot. Right. Or think about the things. And so you start being like, hmm, oh, interesting. This thing is, you know, this, you know, this imagery shows up in this song and it's also in this song. Right. I wonder if they're connected and all, all these different, you know, things are, or with, you know, shanties that happens all the time because they're all, um, uh, they're all sort of cross pollinating and, and stealing from each other yeah, and yeah, copying yeah. things. Uh, so that kind of stuff I find really interesting. And I will uh, stop talking about it now because <laughs> if you talk about it too much, it's something well, you don't the, talk about that often. Exactly. It defeats the purpose of the question. I mean, that's the part of the question that makes it really hard, right? It's the, uh, you never get to talk about it, but you really, really want to. Like, it, it kind of makes it sound like you're bursting at the seams. Yeah. And, and, but you've learned that nobody really wants you to go up and be like, please ask me about my. Yeah. Yeah. During, uh, uh, um, wavelength, the wavelength stream, uh, you're doing, cause that's, you know, something where a lot of weird topics will come up mm -hmm. and different things. And I think it, I think it was somewhat deliberate, uh, on, on her part that, that Corey kept like queuing, uh, uh, Jacob for like, Hmm, you know, be like, Hmm, transformers. That's yeah. an interesting thing. Oh, and Jacob awesome. would be like, stop doing that. <laughs> You're going to make me. And then of course, everybody in the, uh, in the YouTube comments are like, we want to hear Jacob talk about transformers. Or, yeah. You know what? But, yeah, absolutely. If you, he, anyway. he should do, he should just have a stream where he gets to sit do it for six hours. Kind of wear himself out. I don't know that he would. Mm. I, I don't I feel like there's a there's a point of um, excitement when you get to start a topic that you haven't really gotten to talk about mm -hmm. and then there's like a peak and then I feel like in some respects there's a you really want out of this conversation but you, you uh, can't <laughs> like you're not you're not done kind of thing when it, when it comes to transformers all I want is my G1 jet fire back mm. that's that's it I can't I can't picture Beach having a topic that he never talks about. <laughs> That's the problem, right? right. Like it's he like, isn't I, restraining himself on I, anything. I wear a lot of the only thing that I think I've actually not spoken to people about so far, which I guess I can just spill here because I wanted to spend more time with it first, is that I got a very nice gift from a very dear friend. Um, uh, they gave me a wind synth. So an electronic wind instrument, because mm. uh, we were talking about synths and we were talking about I was telling them about how uh, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to publicize uh, hey. much of the details. So I'm just going to say that. Um, uh, I was talking about how my sax teacher back in the day, like back when I was in high school, uh, they had a Yamaha WX7, WX7, uh, which is a cool little wind synth. Um, it was like one of the, I don't know if it was one of the first, but you know, it was the one that he had. And uh, I was enamored with it because I love the idea of you plug this thing into a computer, like into a MIDI stack, yeah. and then you can play music through it. And you can play any kind of instrument. You can play uh, chorus instruments. You can like patch them together and stuff like that. You can do all sorts of cool things. Um, and I was like, man, that looks like it's so much more fun and interesting than having to wet a reed for over a minute and then position, clamp, uh, tune, get everything dialed in perfectly, uh, warm up the instrument, uh, and then actually start playing. As I have, a, I have a tenor sax. I still have my student tenor sax, which I will probably never get rid of. Um, but, uh, I was like, the problem is that that thing lives in a case and it doesn't live out anywhere and I don't have all my stuff exposed and put somewhere so I can play it. And I recently just got some slat wall and I'm trying to get some slat wall hangers so I can hang all my guitars up and hang all my other things on my wall so I can just walk up and take an instrument off and I can play it if I want to. I do feel like, yeah. uh, you know, everyone is like, oh, you know, Beige has, you know, whatever strong opinions about like, you know, anime and yeah. Nintendo and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, different things. And, you know, obviously we've been uh, we've we've done like, you know, Desert Bus and stuff together oh. where, where, where there's lots of sort of the sort of downtime when you're uh, when, when you're just kind of talking about whatever. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like the the musician <laughs> side yeah. of Beige and the, you know, 
opinions about instruments and uh, kinds of the, that aspect. I feel like is maybe not some some an doesn't ad, come out as much. It doesn't come out as much. Okay, um, yeah. and maybe that's just a, a consequence of the the people you know ask about the anime stuff more. Sure, yeah, it's and, a, you know they don't come out with a new season of instruments every six months. Yeah, every six months or it's whatever. It's very easy for people to be like, this is this is a diet of entertainment, and you know I can I can consume a piece of media, and I can then ask somebody else, or I find out that somebody who makes stuff that I like also likes the same thing, and we can you know have conversation about that. Not everybody was in band. Not mm. everybody played in a jazz band when they were young, like those kind of things. You know. Um, it's, which is weird to me because I'm like, you meet a bunch of people and they're like, oh, when I was in drama class or when I did this and I did that, and it was kind of like, but you weren't in band? Like you didn't do any of those? No, no, why would I ever have done I, was, I don't know, man, it's everybody did band? No, not everybody did band. You know, like that's- I feel like-, like Bij- All my friends did because we were all in the same class together. Bij- and Nelson uh, music talk would be an interesting- thing. And, Well, I'd probably pull Ian in on that too because mm-hmm. Ian also played, he played euphonium in, in high school. And so he has a lot of like, you know, he has a lot of, we know how Ian is. Anyway, uh, but that thing, uh, I've been using my WinSynth more and more. It's an Akai EW, e, uh, it's an Akai EWI solo. It's a very nice instrument. It's got a lot of really cool features and I've been playing with it more and more. Um, and you can just hold down the power button. It starts up, go rinse your mouth out. And then um, in like the 10 seconds it takes to start off, just like rinse and spit and whatever. And then pick this thing up and you just blow into it and you can play it as you can pick your type of fingering, flute, clarinet, saxophone, or their standard, their own uh, yeah, video yeah. eye instrument thing. And, and I'm like, okay, this is really cool. And as I kept using it and as I have continued to use it, uh, it's done two things. It's illustrated to me that keys are very important because it has capacitive like touch keys. It doesn't have actuated keys. So, oh. like, keys are very important for the playing of an instrument if you're used to that. Uh, and also being able to start like playing an instrument within 10 seconds of picking it up is incredibly important to making you interested in playing an instrument. If you're not, if you're not in love every, with it. Every barrier that there is to, yeah. to doing it. You it know, means that you never it play out. it. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that I can adjust the volume on this thing or I can plug in headphones and I can play it on my own, it has its own, it's, it's, it's a MIDI controller on its own too, which is great. So if I wanted to use it to do MIDI stuff with a computer, I could plug it in an interface and use it for that. There's so much I like about it. And, and as I was having this conversation, it's like, I am realizing now that I will probably... I don't know, but I will probably end up maybe in five or 10 years buying a better version of this thing that feels more like a saxophone um, because I'll be driven to a point where I'm like, I just need to have that back. I have a saxophone sitting in my cupboard, like in my closet that I could pull it at any time and play it. But having a MIDI saxophone that I can just play whenever I want to when, when the technology is this good really feels like you know that it's a game changer all of a sudden for get, keeping me interested in that side of music which i haven't touched in years cool so that's where that is how about uh how about you heather i really love story like discussing story how it affects people like, like fairy tales are cool i really like fairy tales but how that evolves and over time how that affects the group around them why people are telling it uh, almost to the in, the idea of like the psychology behind it mm. and it's i don't talk a lot just in general i prefer i'm a quieter person um because i'm always listening mm. but you know i like always listen i i just really like the the concept of like how people talk about stories and how they come together how people associate with them i actually get like a huge thrill because my interest sets are pretty different than a lot of people within lurs like similar topics but like video games don't clash the same and whatnot so i get a huge thrill when james is on whatever social media we are on in 10 years and he's like oh i watched this show and i was like i just watched that mm. holy crap mm. other people i know watch the things that i watch <sighs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's actually why sometimes i'll go up to him and be like hey did you watch this show yes okay he did <laughs> and and you love this stuff because you love the um the 
the fact that it's the story aspect, like what's what's great about this story, what failed about this story, those kind of things. Yeah, just yeah. like what's really interesting about it. I rewatch stuff a ton. Yeah. I feel like um, I've I've tried to talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like to my friends all weekend, and none of them care. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. I understand. It's an older show. Nobody else can get as excited as I can get, to realize that that one character who's a potential slayer in season seven ends up playing Cinderella in Once Upon a Time in season seven. And I think that's fascinating. It's both in season seven. Like, yeah, they both show up at the end of the that? series. Yeah. On the, uh, 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 in the, the earlier part of this, where, uh, with, Jordan and Cameron and Nelson. Because mm, you teched it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you know uh, the secrets. Jor Jordan was talking about how she got uh, really interested in, like, one, this guy from, like, uh, Death Note. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's only in the show for, like, five minutes. Like, he's just, like, a little background character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's just like, this guy, you know, he's got all, like, who, who is he? What's he's got going on? Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, I bet anyway. Jordan and I would have a lot of fun together. Yeah. Uh, I bet. All right. Well, uh, we were originally going to answer three questions, and then that turned into we should probably do two questions plus the New Year's stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then realized that uh, apparently we're only going to do one question yeah. because the New Year's stuff took a while, and yeah. you need time to but uh, talk I know people to really, other people. really wanted to hear it because I've seen comments show up that were like, are we not going to get an update on that and now so. you have now you have so thank I you have. for yeah tuning in for the for for our portion of askler and and if you want to uh uh talk to heather about buffy the vampire slayer uh get in the comments or the discord or something i'm sure She'll there's see a, it in the comments i'm sure there's I'll definitely see in the comments i'm sure there's a venue for that yeah the Somebody. discord and we should mention that the discord is really good for having conversations you can you can find us rarely there um there's discord.gg slash lrr yeah. the rule is generally not to at any of the crew directly uh but if you did start a conversation you want to ask people about stuff um the mods can help, uh, probably assist in getting people's attention for you to you know i don't know if i put that on them yeah, I, will, I think that's not a good idea either, now that I no. mentioned it out loud. Don't do like, that either. Look around there. We'll find you, probably. <laughs> we'll find you. <laughs> we will find you. Remember, Ooh. Heather's always listening. I am, actually. That's our segment. We got to throw to Kathleen and Ian and Corey, but thanks for talking to us or listening to us for now. Bye. Thanks, Beach. I'm Corey, and with me today is Ian and Kathleen with James on Tech. Hi. First question, please, James. Favorite new song or album you can't get out of your head and that you will always recommend to people from Lauren Fark 4018. So I have an answer for this because I've been in my feels lately. So it's uh, a Noni's My Back is a Bridge for You to Cross. Mm, that's a really good album. It's really also a very heavy album. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm there making my coffee. Mm, it must change the way you talk to me. Why am I alive? Right Why now. Why am I alive? Oh, <laughs> God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, total banger, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it rips. <laughs> yeah, so fun to listen to, and then you listen to the lyrics, and you're like, oh, God. Oh, have you seen the music videos? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just very quickly looking things up here because oh. it's. Uh, I, I discovered this song. It was on my list of, uh, of best songs of 2023. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sing Kane's Everything is Everything, which is just a very big feels right now. And quite frankly, the uh, I think my motto of 2023. Mm. But I realized uh, just earlier this month that it's part of an album that is coming out later this uh, this month. Ooh. And I cannot wait to, uh, to get in, into the whole thing. Ah, there we go. We Belong is the name of the album. Okay. So recommend that. Who's it by? Sin Kane. Sin Kane. What kind of music is it? It's jazz funk. Jazz funk. Yeah. All right. That sounds very fun. There's also a new Kamasi Washington album coming. Yes. I saw. Yes. I saw. Uh, did you see that uh, uh, Shabaka, uh, uh, formerly of, of like of the Comet is coming, is doing a, a solo album where he plays the flute? Flutes having a Flute's moment. Flutes having a, a moment. Renaissance again. Okay. Nice. So, but that is not which I, what I would recommend to you. Uh, this is everybody who knows me knows that I have a band that I have several pet bands. Mm -hmm. These are one of my in wrestling 
fandom, there's the concept of having a boy. Mm -hmm. The band Fat White Family are my boys. I love Fat White Family. Really? They're so awful. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're like, well, they're really clever and really good at making music, but as people, they're just like, eh, they don't give an at, they give zero shits about what anybody thinks of them. They were being derisive and rude about Pitchfork long before it became <laughs> cool. Uh, they're, the quietest loves them. Mm. So, uh, and uh, yeah, they're great. And they have a new album coming out. Uh, they have, uh, they have, it's called Forgiveness is Yours. It's coming out later. The first, the second single is called Bullet of Dignity. And it, incre it's, it bangs so hard. It's just kind of like a perverse disco funk kind of song. <laughs> They make very strange music, but you know what? They have a really good sense of melody. The 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 um, the music video is incredibly lewd. Uh, <laughs> Go on. Like I can't think of a band that's trying harder to be less marketable. Uh, and I love them. They're fantastic. Uh, and their uh, they their last album was called Surfs Up. S E R F apostrophe S. Good for them. So they've never been like subtle about their politics or wanting to. Literally, I have a poster that comes with Surfs Up. It's in my office right now. Uh, and it's literally like a picture of them beheading Boris Johnson. Like, mm. they're not a subtle band at all. I'm thinking about like surf rock as a as a genre. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Right? <laughs> Just a bunch of peasants out there <laughs> bashing farming implements mm -hmm. together, building guillotines. Work songs. Uh, but yeah, that's my go listen to Bullet of Dignity by Fat White Family, and you too will be like, man, this is so smooth and funky. Mm. Really funk today. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? If you could live in one cinematic universe or IP, oh. i.e. Marvel, DC, Star Wars, etc., but still as a your ordinary self, where would you want to live from the Dave 413, Ian? So I picked this question because it's something I've thought a lot about because I was once a teenager. And you might think that the first answer is going to be like, oh, it's going to be Star Trek the next generation, you know, post, uh, post scarcity society, everything's good. I don't think I have a place there myself. On the holodeck. I'm staying, my, I'm staying myself for this. I, I don't. You live on the holodeck now. I, I can't make books anymore. That's, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to choose the Care Bears universe. Here's why. Very familiar to us. We, we, we live there right now. But bad things happen less because the Care Bears actually exist. And they're out there just making people into better people. Plus, you get to go to Carolot, which is up in the clouds, and ride a cloud car. And I get to be friends with Cheer Bear. Hey. Surely they spend more time hanging around with children than grown adults. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we only got to see the one aspect through the television series, but I like to believe that, you know, Care, uh, you know, uh, Carolot? Yeah, Carolot. Wait, isn't, isn't Care Bears a universe where adults can't see them? Like you forget when, when, when you become an adult? That might just be movie lore. That might just be movie lore. Okay, okay, if you know deep Care Bear lore, please put it in the comments so we can either um, encourage or crush in dreams, <laughs> I suppose. I mean, if, if, if all else fails, I just become no heart and it becomes a, you know, I become a hero of my own story. Yeah, I had a Care Bear dream once where I was in the cartoon just as me, fleshy, so I totally on board with this. <laughs> I want to ride down a rainbow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, if I could be in any IP, what would I choose? Uh, that's very hard. Um, hmm. I would probably, okay, if I, I was young, Kathleen, I, and you know, I'm going to keep this answer. I'd like to live in the Peanuts universe where children are self-sufficient but loved and taken care of. Mm -hmm. Uh, and adults exist and are also seem to be totally functional and involved in children's lives as much as necessary. Uh, but you know, you can have you can have dog adventures and stuff like that. <laughs> That'd be nice. Complete communication breakdown between children and adults. Yeah, realistically, actually, I think I would just say Discworld because there's a fair amount of danger in that world. But I think I'd vibe with it. Mm -hmm. Like I'd probably work for veterinary. Mm -hmm. I would think <laughs> we'd get along. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> I filled out enough of those Myers-Briggs horoscopes to know that I have a type. <laughs> you can be his trapdoor tester. Yeah. Uh, no, I like it like in a paper pushing, not like advising. <laughs> yes. like somebody, not the killing people part? No, no, not like, you know, uh, not advising or, you know, presuming to advise. Like somebody who works in like, you know, the, you know, the great 
infrastructure yep. of running the city. But it's all, you know, slightly I sharing feel, of his views. I feel like we're all very aware of our abilities and that if we end up in any sort of IP, we're not going to be the hero main character protagonist. We no. Just, we need to be someone in the background who's just pushing papers or a button every few minutes. Oh, yeah. Or or I'm some, I'm I'm a witch in some unremarkable village where nothing interesting happens and none of the heroes ever go. Yeah. Like, I just don't want to end up in a situation where someone like Barclay is making fun of me. Mm. That's how you get feagles. Mm. <sighs> I don't have an answer. <laughs> Next question. No, I have an answer. Oh, jeez. I'm jumping in here uh, because I've been uh, thinking about this one a, a bit least, uh, recently because I've been watching the shows. Um, but <clears throat> we've been watching, uh, we just finished up uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And uh, Gilmore Girls remains a sort of a comfort show mm -hmm. of mine for a long time. And my God, when I die, I just want to live in the world that Amy Sherman Palladino creates. Not as a main character at all. Like, I don't want to. Yeah, because they have problems. I want to be the whimsical as fuck side characters that are just like Maury from Gilmore Girls. Just this cool, like, 60 year old dude who just loves jazz. Like, he's just. Everybody is so fantastical in those worlds and i love it so much and it's just like everybody has the same problems that we have in our world but they are solved so much better and i love it and yeah so that's that's me that's where i want to be yeah i think i'm just gonna age into jane lynch's character in in marvelous miss Maisel. oh yeah just big buffant hair yeah, living yeah, yeah. in the 40s for the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> i mean that all in my stage comedy this also sounds good james i think you might have the best answer of us all it's a good one. It's a good one. All right. You guys are going fast, so I'm just going to keep throwing questions at you. Sounds good. Here you go. If one were to visit Vancouver Island and had access to a car, what places outside Victoria would you recommend for day trips from Ferrobender 27? Well, uh, did you know that we are home to not one, but two, the number one and two largest burls in the world? <laughs> Okay, so we go visit the Burls. Yep. I think on the way back, we absolutely have to stay up, stop at Lake Cowichan and get on the tubes. <gasps> oh, okay, just that's say actually fun. potholes. Just go visit the potholes. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a very good like uh, old timey British uh, British style pub in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Uh, called the Crow and Gate. It is mm -hmm. so good. That's where we had that scotch egg. Oh, that yeah. was a good scene. Yeah. You can literally just go and order a plowman's lunch, and they're oh. like, have a hunk of bread and some cheese and Captain. stuff like that. And it's like raw timber low ceiling yeah it's it's like it's like it's like a disnified version of a pub <laughs> almost certainly mm -hmm. but is does bouchard gardens count as out of town because i just learned they have a carousel well if you need to get a car i do it makes sense yeah the carousel is actually fun i've ridden it with penelope i like carousels this is probably a joke for anyone who's only ever come here, though. But quite frankly, if you do have a car and you're coming to Victoria and Vancouver Island, the best place and uh, to go is uh, Langford. Only accessible by car. And they have a Costco. <laughs> mm -hmm. No I mean, lies detected. It's not incorrect. <laughs> we actually have, if you are in Victoria and you're like, I want to see Victoria, you should um, do some research online or borrow <laughs> about what that means. No, 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 no. <laughs> or borrow a book from the live from the local library. Like they probably have this at a local library and you could just go look at it. But there's like books that have collected all sorts of like easily accessible hiking trails around mm -hmm. Victoria because we are lousy with parks and nature areas oh, it's gorgeous. and it's really pretty here. Uh, some parts look like the West Coast, other parts look like the Scottish Highlands mm -hmm. around here. Like it's a really nice place and you can find, you could find an outdoorsy walk for a whole variety of like fitness levels and stuff like that, depending on what you wanted to do. But most of it's only accessible by car. Yeah, the mm -hmm. stuff along like uh, Cordova Bay around Mount Doug. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. And if you want just a nice drive, uh, go and Google Victoria Motorcycle The Loop. And it takes you on a loop down basically around the coast up through some of the mid areas and back down along the coast past Souk into downtown. And it's just absolutely gorgeous, filled with uh, filled with twisty bits and a little bit of a speedy up. There's some really good driving around yeah. here. Mm -hmm. yeah. As somebody who's gone for a few Sunday drives, but <laughs> to these walks, basically. But again, yeah, it's a oh, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous area. Hey, James, do you got any uh, tourism information? Um, I mean, there's always Tofino. 
Yeah. Like Tofino is it's pretty just great. It's a little further than it, I would want to. It is it is a it's not a day trip. I would not call it a day trip because it does take a good four hours to get there from Victoria. So like if you're gonna go there, you're gonna probably want to spend at least a night or two. Uh but it is absolutely gorgeous it is driving there is my favorite drive in, on the island i have done it <clears throat> god probably 20 times at this point in my life uh and it never gets it never gets old except for when you know it gets shut down and you can't go anywhere because mm -hmm. it's single lane and there's a lot of rock slides uh but you'll be fine just uh pack an excavator if it's <laughs> good enough for the prime minister you may also enjoy it it's so expensive. I've never been to Dufino. Oh, mm, but you're not into like surfing. No, <laughs> <laughs> I am into looking at nice things, though. Like the the nature. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I always enjoy that. It's one of the few places that's good for storm watching. I understand on the island as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there's some there's some fun uh, tourist tourist advice. Most of it, to, given our job, surprisingly, like get outside and be active. Mm -hmm. Well, we like filming that sort of thing. That's true. <laughs> yes, make it work, and then we can do it. I mean, I have pitched bringing a bunch of people just to do a walk around Rithit's bog. Do you know a lot of our parks in Victoria are bog and swamp based, and I, we don't advertise that fact a lot? I, yeah, it's a crime. I feel like the bog witch persona is something that's, that's starting to rise. No, right? it's so. just something I've noticed about Victoria that they're like, oh, Swan Lake, that's a swamp. Uh, Rithit's bog, literally just a bog. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lake was a man-made lake because there was a bog and they dug it in. I mean, still, like, the, all of the surrounding marshy wetlands, it's very swampy. Geologically, that makes sense. You know, we, we are just, like, a rock thrust up out of the ocean with some dirt on top if of it. If you're in into places. bogs, there are better bogs up island. That's near, true. Near, like, <laughs> Kim's Beach area, like, just outside of Parksville, let's say. Anywho. I think next you're exhausted, question. <laughs> We know Graham has lots of opinions on fonts and typefaces. What about the rest of you from the day of 14? Big thoughts and feelings on fonts. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like I get overshadowed by Graham's uh, uh, enthusiasm. For Verdana's that, but... good enough for anything. I will. <laughs> Did you know that Apple, in their most recent defense on their, uh, their, their, their work to uh, comply with the European Union, uh, released a document set in Arial? If you want to know how bad things are going over at that company. But uh, that, honestly, I, did, I would. Did, did they do it as like a like a rude gesture coming from Apple to set a, a document scenario? I don't. I, I think it just went through the lawyers and not through anyone else at Apple who has taste, or there may be no one left at Apple who has taste. That's Ian's hot take for the week. Font wise, uh, I mean, uh, Futura is always good. Uh, Universe Bold is absolutely one of my favorites. Those big, thick Swiss slab fonts are just gorgeous, delicious. And uh, when you put them together, you can do the 2001 logo. Give me them. Give me them an ancient antique gothic fonts. Oh, big chunky. Big chonkles. Oh, things in I like, I like what, what is it? Bookman? Uh, plate gothic oh yeah copper plate copper what are plate. what are all the little swibbly swirls on on gothic font pieces called i know this but i can't remember it Gosh, you, yeah you, you've caught me off guard there as well i don't uh you know we'll think of it and then we'll think come back swirls It'll, might be yeah. the name <laughs> You know what I mean. All the extra jazz they add to the letters. When, when, when a when a, uh, a serif just kind of stops, uh, st stops stopping growing and just keeps going. Yeah, yeah like that sort of thing. <laughs> out of control serifs. <laughs> uh, all right, next question. We're only at sixteen minutes. Let's keep it going. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, this is the last one. Okay. All right. Have you all enjoyed doing Ask Lur? Yes. Thank you, Soft Spot. Bye. Mm -hmm.